Part 1 General Inquiry for Students. Okay, there will be 16 in total uh, meetings, and uh, eight of them will be lectures. So, this is first lecture, and also well, there will be eight colloquiums or uh, seminars. Each, each lecture is about one and a half hour or two academical hours. Um, all right, the next part is um, uh, we will be discussing it a little later is about the how to get the points grades how to get those results uh, but now it's not so important now it's important is the section a general section not only for students but for everyone like for example for anyone who occasionally came uh, into uh, philosophy auditorium and and wonder what is it about so this exactly part how to do with philosophy a brief guide to philosophical text or reading philosophical text is just in about okay here we are the evaluation criteria one the fruitful study of philosophy supposes read or reading philosophical text of course because uh, not just reading for example <laughs> labels or uh, scriptures on the wall but uh, reading books and studying some uh, serious literature so it's about the selective reading not everything but some particular of course you can read everything you want but uh, it supposes some selective reading some certain authors the next step is a thoughtful or meaningful reading is a temporary and proposal reading is reading for something to reach some a peculiar goal uh, to I don't know, obtain a final destination or something. The next one is the thinking reading. Oh, uh, thinking while you're reading. But what, what does it mean? It, it, it is about asking questions while you're reading. <clears throat> so you can ask questions about wh war, uh, where, what, uh, then, how, and so on. And analyzing the text is just about <sighs> dividing the text into some parts. For what? To compare them. And uh, trying to make some conclusions because those parts which are you asking about uh, you can combine together and get some results using logic okay let's summarize it first of all the fruitful study of philosophy is selective temperature and proposal reading of philosophical text uh, studying content of which the reader asks questions compare the parts and draws conclusion expressing his own uh, critics all right, the evaluation criteria two. What is to know philosophy? At least, of course, partially. So, what is supposed to, to know? I mean, to get some information from philosophy to to understand it. To know philosophy is to know its subject, what uh, to where uh, it directed, and its method, a way how to obtain something. Then, of course, the, those goals. Yeah, uh, to know its chapters or branches, and what are they for? Because Philosophy consists of some branches, some parts, some sections, and uh, it's of course good to know which the parts and uh, their methods. It's also useful to know the history because you know the previous studies. It will be very useful because uh, it supposes to know recent schools of thoughts and to know thoughts and ideas of the most well-known philosophers. Uh, you know, like for example, most authorian ones, uh, well-known. A philosopher and so on. Sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> uh, studying philosopher for some people, it's just the same to study the, uh, you know, those great minds to understand those people. Maybe it is. Maybe it's uh, 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 makes sense. But anyway, let's summarize this part. Those mere knowledge of philosophy is a knowledge of its subject and methods, uh, the function of its branches. Now the uh, general history of philosophy and mainly its schools of the West, uh, most well-known thinkers of it. Uh, the next evaluation criteria three: productive using of philosophy. Just not only you know, for example, reading or uh, understanding uh, some sources, not only to know it, but but what 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 for? Yeah, what for? So 
to find philosophical questions among the other to pick to say oh this is a philosophical question and this is not to find relevant chapter uh, to fit uh, this question into some area to understand that uh, for example this question belongs to some uh, certain chapter and then to find a positions discussions about this and for that uh, studying uh, history of philosophy is needed is also i mean you know having uh, sources about philosophy like for example magazines journals about philosophy and so on google it and uh, so on to understand the plot uh, what uh, were the discussion about that uh, also is uh, to create a thesis and to defend it using ideas of thinkers uh, like maybe some previous thinkers we were talking about and to create counter thesis and also a, an alternative path because philosophy is not just you know sticking at one point no it's viewing as more uh, points as possible and after then to work on your own right thought to make some conclusions uh, viewing this subject from different angles okay therefore Productive using of philosophy supposes being able to find a philosophical question, choose the relevant chapter which uses it, find relevant positions about the problem and discussions, and decisions about them, uh, make a thesis and a position to it, defend it both sides, and work on your own right thought. Okay, the orders of lecture. As you can see, this eight part. Oh, it's just a minimal part, of course, because this is not, um, you know, it's like a crash course uh, or a brief course. As you can see, uh, this is an introduction, yeah, just uh, some explanation. Then, a part of three lectures about a history of philosophy. We try to concentrate on some of them. Um, by the way, there is a little mistake. I wanted to type um, 17 instead of a 15. But, uh, okay, uh, the fourth lecture is about the uh, history of philosophy from 17 to 19 centuries. Uh, yeah. The next three is about methods or more relevant parts, you know, for example, like ethics, epistemology, uh, and so on, is also an important one. And then some contemporary philosophical ideas, so some, uh, some ideas of today, today's thinkers. But uh, by today, I understand not only, for example, just today, but uh, a little past, like, for example, uh, last uh, cent 20th century and so on because some say that the uh, history of ours uh, is still from from this uh, 20th century we are just a part of it <laughs> yeah mm, okay part two what philosophy is let's look at this for statements i'll read it for them uh, first thoughts on knowledge and philosophy a1 in the beginning, people had nothing about of themselves and nature. Then, their lack of knowledge was kind of philosophical. A2. In the beginning, people had nothing about as themselves, so the nature. Then, they had no knowledge at all. B1. In the beginning, people had some knowledge, whereas without philosophy, they had nothing. And B2. In the beginning, people had some knowledge, and if they had them, they were philosophers uh, no it's uh, it d doesn't reference to anything it's just for you to think a little is because uh, knowledge and philosophy uh, and to know philosophy is uh, not so very easy it's kind of difficult and sometimes we can say about knowledge knowledge of philosophy it's not about that it's something about uh, quite different but let's take a look at the map of philosophy all right in the beginning, people had nothing except for some knowledge, let's assume that, of what they were and what they had always been. So this square painted in uh, different colors, yes, uh, represents that uh, idea. But later, they appeared several areas of knowledge as, like psychology, physics, mathematics, engineering, biology, and so on. However, there are some neutral some uh, Mediterranean waters <laughs> and these waters uh, I don't know we can um, name this curved area uh, as like as you want is maybe represented as philosophy let's explain it a little we can try to define philosophy we are what philosophy is not or what is not a philosophy 
uh, what does it mean not to be a philosopher from this way like you know like for example from the uh, country uh, example also uh, country uh, alternative way of understanding we can count any other sciences to precisely find the correct one for us among the others I, I, it's mean like for example if you're a scientist and you mm, had has overcome your uh, own uh, science you will performed it and you want to know more so you need to cross it and to find some others uh, stuff uh, to go through so this is about a philosophy when philosophy starts when uh, a scientist had reached the point he wants to know more all right we can challenge our knowledge the challenge is for example the science or some subject like for example like socrates did asking for example architectures or sculptors or uh, medical uh, workers and so on about their science <laughs> asking hard difficult questions and then to challenge them to challenge them and you know like for example uh, some disasters some events hard events they make people to uh, think about things more deeply all right and person the truth because what is the main goal yeah to understand reality to answer those questions of philosophy all right uh, two important things arguments and opinions or just arguments because philosophy is tied up with arguments uh, and let's before moving it let's take a look at some quotes the first one philosophy is the highest music said by Plato so Plato uh, but um, uh, by the way it might uh, have been said by Pythagoras because Plato uh, liked Pythagoras and um, considered himself as some kind of a, a pupil of him uh, so um, highest music is some kind of art the same about philosophy is some kind of art everything has beauty but not everyone sees it said Confucius a uh, Chinese philosopher yes so you need to have something some ability yeah in uh, this profound Islamic philosopher Abhichina uh, said that the knowledge of anything since all things have caused causes is not acquired or complete unless it is known by its causes so uh, it doesn't really matter which exactly I uh, information bring you, but if it does not have any causes or I don't know them, then what uh, what information it is? No one of uh, causes is of course the most profound way, uh, more wise. Another East philosopher, as uh, Lao Tzu uh, said, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Of course, you should uh, just do one step to to move to another section. Einstein, um, uh, saying in some kind of philosophical style, said, everyone is a genius, of course, because everyone has something inside. And we uh, have to work on it to reveal that, to represent that genius of us. And Ludwig Wittgenstein, an Einstein philosopher, said, if people never did silly things, nothing intelligent would ever get done. Of course, it's some kind of a representation or another set of uh, like you know uh, proverbs. Uh, mistakes are the stepping stones of the learning. Uh, so uh, you can uh, do a mistake, but uh, it's not so bad. The role of argumentation and opinions. Philosophy is the quest for the best opinions possible and the best life possible. Everyone has an opinion, but we can't just assume that our opinions are right. We should question uh, our own beliefs uh, and seek uh, justifications uh, for them. Uh, philosophy is the classroom is focused on good arguments and what uh, good arguments are. By the way, uh, argumentation uh, is also some kind of the other branch we can mm, precise on it. But but let's say that an understanding of logic because an argument uh, cannot be an illogical an understanding of justification uh, is probably one of uh, two uh, really important things um, so without being justified or without being logical is not very good for argument 
Uh, however, philosophy is um, trying um, to assume and to challenge, even not uh, so up absolutely, let's say, illogical or something, arguments. Okay, in philosophy, you're not allowed to believe whatever you want in philosophy because you have to be able to justify your beliefs. You have to challenge them. It's something about not just to trust, but to be a little skeptical, yeah? Uh, in everyday life, the word argument is often takes in some kind of a confrontation. We argue with people uh, when we have never uh, uh, fine with them. Um, so arguing is a way to achieve the truth. Let's uh, take an example, a brief example. Okay, two people uh, discuss with each other. First said, the new, war, uh, new Star Wars movie weren't very good. Then uh, the answer, yes, they were. Uh, they had great special effects. The answer next, no, they weren't. They had boring characters. Then, they were good movies. Next, no, they weren't. And uh, then, yes, they were. So uh, this kind of a uh, discussion is not a philosophical at all, absolutely. And this is not an argumentation. Argumentation is something that, um, uh, something that uh, make me uh, to believe in it, uh, to conceive me with something. And that's why uh, arguments has some force, let's say, some force. Um, okay, philosophy not like the others. So. These arguments is just one part, but philosophy is a subject quite unlike any other. General nature or such a subject so tried to gain knowledge of parts of the world through controlled observation empirically. Because unlike this style of thinking and philosophy, yes, um, uh, philosophy is some kind of a conceptual study. It is an activity usually aimed at clarifying, redefining, or at creating new ones conceptions such as uh, clarifications and understanding of non-empirical sense uh, because conceptual understanding is something that uh, moves us through through the philosophical way uh, uh, just an explanation for example uh, uh, such a question as do ghosts exist or uh, is there any life uh, in the Andromeda galaxy is an empirical one because to know them we should do something empirically it doesn't really matter because it supposes to be but such a question as what is a ghost or what counts as life are conceptual yeah these questions are conceptual like for example what is a number or what is the nature of number or um let's say what is the meaning of life this is more conceptual than empirical and this is something we should uh, aim for and the final chapter, uh, part three, philosophy, uh, the philosophy's branches. All right, uh, these are just a part of them, but most useful uh, uh, metaphysics, the theory of reality, or the more general part of philosophy branches. Um, uh, uh, metaphysics is not really um, easy to define, and sometimes uh, you can put a, a, a question of metaphysics. Uh, that don't belong to the other branches. It's like, for example, taking all the other branches, and uh, that uh, would be one set, and the rest one is a metaphysics. Yeah, metaphysics is more representative part because more many of um, questions look like uh, metaphysics, and also the ethics in third part because um, maybe in life uh, would take more. Uh, examples from uh, ethics. Also, epistemology, theory of knowledge. E ethics uh, studies what is good, what's bad, uh, morality. Uh, aesthetics uh, or theory of value is studies as axiology uh, and uh, beautiness and some other concepts. Logic is a theory of inference or reasoning. Yeah, it's quite close to arguments, by the way. And some other branches is, for example, social uh, philosophy is about society, human, and so on. And also, such a branch is ontology. Some say that uh, this is a branch of metaphysics. However, ontology usually take is taken as as uh, very uh, one of of the branches. Okay, logic. The main philosophical me uh, method or the central philosophical method. 
it is a theory of inference, or how from one set of arguments we can get another one, uh, and not only from one set. It means, like, for example, uh, uh, what should we do with even one set to construct them, to, to, to make them, to get some, so to inference something. Or what does it mean that a given argument can be taken from another set of arguments? Get extracted or so on. Or what does it mean for two certain arguments to coexist without a contradiction? So, uh, like for example, if uh, I have inferred uh, something uh, from one set of arguments and uh, got something, uh, is it contradicts to the previous or not? And so on. Uh, let's exemplify it. Let's take these complex sentences that consist of five sentences, um, which are the voltage increases. Let's assume this, uh, this uh, proposition and uh, name it P. It would be P and P. Then the resistance remains the same. It would be Q. Understand as Q. The current will increase. Uh, it um, uh, will be stick to the letter R. The wires start melting uh, is S and uh, the wires are too thin is a letter T. Okay, so five propositions, five letters. Uh, if you can see this uh, painting in red, um, uh, connections are logical ones. So they can be transformed or formalized into some some other forms. So what is proposition or a sentence? It's something that can be either false or true. Uh, and the complex sentences is also can be either false or true. So logic tries to um, uh, those complex thoughts transform or formalize into some more simplest uh, to understand their general uh, value. Uh, so, we, we represented them using that formula uh, in the third line. Uh, let's read it using some logical operators. Uh, um, conjunction of P and Q inferred. Uh, disjunction of R and a complex sentence as equi equivalent uh, to T. So, we can count a general uh, value of that formula uh, using particular values of each proposition. Uh, okay, and also, uh, by the way, brackets, dots, and so on are also included, so as a part of formalization. So we can see that uh, logic is uh, um, uh, allows us to formalize, and then to understand uh, what uh, can be inferred, and uh, what we can get in the result. The next branch is epistemology. It's the branch that studies knowledge, or what knowledge is, or how to know something, and can we know something at all, and so on. As you can see, this is a uh, part of base of Socrates, who said, One thing only I know, and that is that I know nothing. Such an interesting case, uh, that uh, Socrates said, I, I don't know anything. Yeah, I, I know that I don't know uh, nothing. All right, some examples. Copernicus believed the Earth went round the Sun and its movement was circular. circular. Right, uh, as the next uh, section, we can formalize it into uh, the Earth uh, rounds the Sun and the Q, uh, its movement is circular. So these two sentences we can combine uh, using conjunction, a uh, logical operator. And then we can ask about that. How can it be? Were they both those sentences true, or only one of them? For Copernicus, if the total system was wrong, were they, uh, there any true knowledge? In which way, though, they systemize? So, how can it be that, for example, Copernicus uh, believed in one true statement, uh, the Earth uh, rounds the Sun, and the next, uh, a false one, its movement uh, is circle, circle. Because uh, we know that uh, one of them is false, and uh, if uh, Copernicus believed in two of them, how can it be epistemologically, epistemologically to have a false uh, proposition and by even by that uh, to infer some uh, knowledge and so on? Metaphysics. The branches about the most abstract things, like 
and let's list some of them. It's just a little part, but identity. Identities are, for example, something is identical to some uh, uh, thing, yeah, um, or the same uh, differences. For example, one thing has something that uh, the other thing doesn't have, and so on. Oneness, or for example, why this thing is uh, exists as some unit, some whole, some oneness, uh, why it is not as pluralness, and the other is pluralness, yeah, why this thing is not the oneness, why it is plural. Beyond this is, for example, uh, why we cannot reach something. Uh, anything we do, we cannot reach them. Because, but beyond uh, our, uh, that limit, uh, there is something, yeah? So how can it be in someone about that limit? And some spatial, temporal, and so on things. Uh, also, it can be said that metaphysics is a level up to physics. So uh, metaphysics asks uh, those questions that physics uh, doesn't. Uh, let's look at some examples. Does everything exist simultaneously nowhere or elsewhere? Or does exist, uh, every, uh, everything exist at the same time elsewhere? Uh, for example, etern the eternalism is some kind of a view. Assumes that uh, there is as past, so future. So future, present, and past uh, exist uh, at the same moment somewhere. Well, the presentism, unlike that, uh, thinks that uh, everything exists just at the, this moment, the, this particular moment. So there are no past and no future. If two things are identical in all respects, is this possible to stay to say that there are two things? Oh, oh, oh yeah. So for example, uh, uh, thing A and thing B, they are completely identical, completely. So maybe there are no two things. Maybe just one thing. Yeah, we can ask about that. Or a question like um, uh, British philosopher John Locke asked Today I'm a person of what I am. Will I be the same tomorrow? So uh, we also can ask about that. Ontology. Ontology is the brand that studies the existence and the being. What is the being and the existence? Or what does it mean to exist? How something can exist, or uh, are there any non-existent things? Maybe non-existent things also exist in some way. Uh, or, for example, is the existence just a predicate, like some linguistic construction, or uh, which predicate existence is, and so on. Uh, uh, all right. Do colors exist? In which way? We can ask about this. What was before the Big Bang? Yeah. What was bef before the musical Big Bang? <laughs> right. Uh, or the next one. If a planet blows up, is it still a planet torn to pieces or not? If a planet is a sum of particles, then it never stops to exist. So, for example, if there are only atoms and everything exists as atoms, uh, consists of atom atoms, then how can it be that, for example, uh, w uh, well, <laughs> what is going on? Uh, there were atoms and there will be atoms, so nothing changed, right? And how can we understand that? Or uh, questions like, are unicorns real? Or if they're real, in which way? Is reality real? In which way? Theory of value. Studies such well as, for example, beautiness, ugliness, and so on. What does it mean that this thing cost more than that or why is this thing important or what makes it to be important for example this thing some someone is explaining yeah this thing is valuable because it costs lots of money so this high prices makes it be valuable another explanation it could be i like apples because they are tasty just taste it. Another one. If the things help us to survive, they are valuable. This also can be uh, just a uh, possible reason to consider this thing as valuable. Or it doesn't matter whether it's raining because I have my umbrella and uh, that this rain is going on somewhere. Uh, there I'm not. <laughs> uh, and even neutral some values. Okay, ethics. The, um, that studies. Morality, or and morality, what is it? 
uh, that answer the question what is good, what is bad, and about that. Uh, are there any such categories as good and bad? Or how, how can something something be good and why is it good? What makes it to be good? Or is there anything absolutely good? Okay, let's uh, take a look at some of those examples. We can ask about moral or not moral, good or bad, and so on. Uh, is it good or bad to help each other cooking? Yeah, is moral or giving advices or making fun or to sarcastically laugh or to stay at each other for five minutes or to stop talking to each other and so on. Uh, we can ask about uh, particular things in general. There are some other branches like for example philosophy of politics or of science or law or some others and even natural philosophy but mm, uh, we're not going to consider it in this. Uh, maybe in some other uh, courses I'll try to also say something about Ukrainian philosophy. Mm, it will be very good I think. But for now mm, you can if you want to uh, do some uh, homework tasks. Uh, what is it? To find some philosophical proverbs and to study it carefully, thinking about its value and meaning. Do some proverbs from from traditional folks or someone. And to find any philosophical text that raises a question about what philosophy is. And make a brief analysis of it, uh, using, for example, texts, arguments, opposite theses, conclusions, as uh, we uh, done it, uh, we have been done it while uh, viewing the evaluation criteria 1, 2, and 3. So those parts might be helpful. Okay, thank you very much for your attention and you're welcome.